Hi everyone, today I'm teaching you how to create beautiful, incredible Dubsado forms using Dubbins. So I'm gonna take a form that looks like this, kind of boring, and change it into this with you. So I'm very excited and I hope you will bear with me because it can seem a little bit complicated at first, but once you have the templates done, just like everything with Dubsado, it is so easy to use. I also have a discount code that will get you a little bit off if you want to invest in Dubbins, which are all the plugins that we're going to use throughout this tutorial. So check that out in the description of this video and let's dive in. Okay, here's the thing though. There is coding involved. This can feel a little bit complicated. So I do recommend having a very clear understanding of Dubsado and what you are trying to do. I'm gonna show you proposals and lead captures. There's a little bit different thing you have to do for questionnaires, contracts, etc. cetera. Um, but we really you know, wanna focus on our proposals because that's the first thing the client's really seeing and we can make it especially beautiful. Now this is Dubbins and this is what we are using to make this form beautiful. Dubbins is basically a collection of what's called plugins that do various things. So that um, FAQ drop down, uh, different, you know, this little header, different pricing tables, etc. These are all different plugins provided by Dubbins that work perfectly with your Dubsado forms. And then all of those plugins kind of work in conjunction with the things that Dubsado is already doing, selecting packages, putting in quantities, et cetera. So what I'm going to recommend to you is using the Dubbins for the things that mostly remain static on your forms. That doesn't mean that you can't change which package it is, but if there's always going to be a package in this space right here, um, that's something that you can use a plugin for. If there is not going to always be a package in that section, then that could mess up the code for the whole form, which you'll see. So I'd recommend maybe just using a Dubsado package there as opposed to kind of putting that through the plugins to make it especially beautiful. So finding that combo between stuff that's static and stuff that changes every time will kind of be a little bit of the magic that goes on here. So when I'm over in Dubsado, I have basically just copied the proposal that I've been using in the past, which as you can see is so simple, frankly, a little bit boring. <laughs> uh, so what we have here is logo, welcome, frequently asked questions. These stay the same for everyone. Um, I'm gonna delete, I don't even know why these little spacers are here, whatever. And then I put the Proposal. If you've seen my proposal videos in Dubsado, I like to build out the invoice because my packages are so customized. If your packages are a little bit less customized, um, you can use packages here, but I like to build out the invoice and have that populate. And then what's next? XOXO. And then this is just reminding them that shipping is estimated and all pricing is subject to change if colors, papers, et cetera, change so that they are not surprised when anything changes. And then this is what they have to agree to. This is my information. Very, very simple, frankly, a little bit boring. So let's see what we can do to liven this up a little bit. So I think this section, the logo and the welcome, we can really combine into one. Um, frequently asked questions, there actually is a an expandable question plugin in Dubbins, so we will check that out. Uh, the proposal, this pulls information from the invoice, and so that might need to be something that just stays as it is here in Dubsado. Um, I might use some different fonts and things like that from the uh, Dubbins plugin, but in general, this is something that will likely need to kind of stay put because that changes for every job. Of course, something like what's next, all of this can be simply redone and all of these next steps too. So anything that's static, um, definitely try to think about how you're going to put that over into uh, Dubbins. And as you get better at it, you'll see how the Dubsado capabilities and the Dubbins capabilities play together, but keep it simple at first and uh, get familiar with it because it can be, it can start out feeling a little confusing, but it's a really great way to add so much pizzazz to your forms. Okay, so over in Dubbins, um, I've purchased the designer template that's going to come with 15 
plugins that you can use, the most common ones, um, and then you can physically change so much about this to customize it. So we're gonna start with generate. And this is going to start the complicated process, but don't worry, it's really not as crazy as it sounds. So this code is that what you need to add to your Dubsado form. You'll copy it to your clipboard, and we're gonna add a code block, where are you, to the top. We will delete the hello world text and paste in the Dubbins text. Here is your Notice that it went right. It says Dubbin's initial script, do not delete this block. And then the second thing we need is to enter your Dubsado form ID. And that is all of these numbers up here after the word edit. You wanna make sure you get all of them. So this is telling Dubsado what to do. And then this is connecting it back to Dubbin's, to the genie. All right, we're gonna press, press okay. Pretty simple and it's going to upload. Look, it's our form. How did you know? <laughs> so then we can select the different uh, plugins that we're going to use by using this add or remove or reorder plugins in your template. And then the other thing that we need to do with our template over here um, that I didn't do previously because I was just creating the form in Dubsado is to put all of your Dubsado elements into columns. Uh, that makes sure that different sections of your form will be movable and you can put plugins in between them. So if we leave this all as is, we can only put plugins below or above this entire thing. But if we wanted to put a plugin somewhere in here, then we wouldn't be able to do that. So we're going to put everything in columns. We're gonna add columns and move everything to it. If you want something to just go all the way across, you can select one column. And the title of your columns is something you can use in the Genie as we're generating the code for your form. So you can either show it or not show it, but you'll see it on the other end. And then you put everything in here. So we're actually probably going to end up deleting um, this particular element from the forms because we don't really, we're gonna replace it completely with a plugin. So um, I'm going to actually delete that one. And I think we're gonna end up deleting this, but I still want it to be here so that I can see what these different questions say. Um, and then the proposal is the only other part. So I'm gonna put that in columns. This is actually already in columns, which is nice. And I can just rename it FAQ, click not to show the title. Um, and then I will put the proposal information in a one column. Okay, and then the rest of this, I kind of want to keep it here just to see what it looks like and what it says, but in general, we won't be using it. So now I'm going to click save, and then we're going to go into generate with this template. Now what you see is a little bit crazy, and that's because all of our dubbins are already loaded in here, but if you scroll down, you'll see our frequently asked questions, you'll see our proposal information, and you see that the fonts have changed a little bit. And everything that was on our form is still here, uh, it's just changed a little bit and there's all this other stuff here. So when you go into this button, you can add or remove or reorder the plugins that are on your template. So we have a header, we have a section banner, welcome banner, uh, vertical timeline, package table, and then you'll see here, this is what we have. We can't really edit those as much. Um, they don't have the underline because those are the different uh, columns that we added. So FAQ, proposal, and then we have a blank two columns in there. Let's see, we have an image card, a pricing table, three pricing tables, a carousel, a scrolling screenshot, a section banner, whew, accordion, testimonial slider, next stepper, submission bar, butter, and then form fields. And then we also have a, a plugin called fonts, buttons, and general. I forget what the ST stands for, general styles. <laughs> okay, so there's a lot here. So let's look at it and decide what we want. Now this top bar 
beautiful. Love it. It looks very similar to the Dipsado one. We definitely want that one. Uh, this is our welcome banner. It's nice. I think what we want to do is get rid of this one and just have this one. So keep it really simple at the top. This is your vertical timeline. So really cool. So many different things you can do with this. Um, these are the things that are already in there. This is three different options where they can learn more. I don't really want to have them learning more because I don't really want to link them to anywhere else. Um, this is a scrolling image. You could put a gallery of your images here. I might do that, this section where I have some of my old uh, mock-ups. Maybe that's a good one for that. This is kind of a scrolling one, which is really cool, especially for like, a web designer. Then we have our accordions. Lovely. This is a testimonial slider. Next stepper, footer, just so much here. There's so much. <laughs> so let's try adding and removing a couple. I'll delete the header. Um, I'll delete the vertical timeline, the package table, delete this image card. All right, now I've deleted some things, so let's see what that looks like. Okay, this looks a little bit more like we what we want it to do. Now, each of these sections can be edited, and in order to switch between which one you're editing, right now we are editing the welcome banner, which is this plugin. So to switch to them, you'll just click this, and now we will be editing the accordion. which is down here. So it's a good idea to do fonts, buttons, and general styles first because that's going to affect everything on your whole form. Now, when you go into settings, profile, and then you click on brands and fonts, you'll get some of these settings that you can go ahead and put together. So um, your custom font, you can upload uh, Cerebon, Mother, Meriwether from Google Fonts and Adobe Fonts as well. You can do any of those options so that it will match your brand information. And you can include your primary, secondary, and accent colors here as well. So some of that will pull in. I'll go back to our template. And when you click on this little settings guy here, it will give you your options. So for heading one, you know, you have Meriwether, Sapphire, Script, Cerebon, all of your custom fonts. So for heading one, I'll do um, Sapphire Script, which is my font that I've made. And we will make sure our letter spacing is zero because it is a script font. And then we can make sure we change everything else here too. You might need to go into some of the plugins and change the typography. Uh, you could also do all of the type and editing potentially before you add the plugins and sometimes that will work. And you're already seeing there's a merge field here that will apply in Dubsado correctly. So if you see any of those throughout here or if you want to use any of those throughout here, uh, you can do that in your plugins as well. Now we're gonna talk about our content. So we have our images and you can change to just a background color if you prefer. One thing that's important is making sure you know where to get this image URL. So you'll go back into your Dubsado form, you'll add an image block at the bottom. We'll add the image file just as normal.
And then you'll right click and click copy image link. And then you can actually delete this. You don't need it anymore, but that is going to be the URL for that piece. And it goes ahead and changes. Uh, if you want to get some information about the images, you can always click this little question mark and it'll talk to you about how to size them correctly. Now the card URL will do the same thing here. We already have this image, so we'll just copy the link. And there it goes, yay. Now you can change the text here. I'm not gonna um, go through and do that right now. I'll show you towards the end what I came up with. And of course you can change all of the links and everything about them. This overlay color is going to be uh, this gray piece right here. So you could change that to whatever uh, color code that you want it to be. And you can change the color of this card or the color of the bottom banner, or whatever you'd like to do. So I'll change it to my pink that I use for my branding. And you'll basically be able to do that with every single piece of this puzzle. I'm not necessarily going to show you going through and editing every single one, but I'll show you where the final form ends up and how we bring it over to Dubsado to make it work. All right, so as you can see, I have done some editing here. Um, we started with this, so you saw what the image and colors look like, but I changed out the text. I changed out my social icons to match my colors and my links. I've moved the accordion FAQ up to the top and changed so much about the appearance of this. It looks really beautiful. And I've changed the text, of course. I'm gonna get some new pictures because these aren't the exact right size, but they're a good placeholder for now. Then we have our proposal, which is going to fill in from Dubsado, our testimonial slider. If I stay here for a second, it will change to a new one, in theory. Um, <laughs> there are five different ones there. And then we have, there it goes, change. <laughs> and then we have our next stepper, which is the three next steps. And I've changed all of that. And then at the bottom we have, um, the bottom, I do want to move the, uh, this submission bar, so I'll just go back up in here and move our submission bar. You can't move the uh, pieces on your form in Dubsado, but you can move everything else around them. So it's basically the same thing. Now, okay, we have our next steps and showing our missing fields. What I'll probably eventually do here is make this more about the process. So kind of talk about when you get your proofs and things like that. But I just went with the, you know, submit, sign, contract, pay, retainer at this point. Um, and we'll keep updating as we go. So this looks really beautiful. It matches my branding. I love how it looks. Um, so what are we going to do? First of all, we're going to want to make sure we save this. <laughs> um, we're going to update our existing one. Perfect, perfect. And then this is where the magic happens. We're going to click rub the lamp and we're gonna get, this is, it's the genie, it all comes together. And we'll just click copy magic to keyboard. So now we're going to add a code block at the top above our other piece. And we're going to get rid of this, copy in all of our code and let it do its work. And it looks like it's done nothing. So sometimes you'll see it in here and sometimes it won't be shown so much in here. Let's see if I go back out or even do a refresh. I find it's a mixed bag, but there's a way to test. So what we're gonna do is change um, a little bit about the top here. So we'll add in public before form, and then we'll change edit to view. And that's the public form link. So if we copy and paste this over in this tab, then here's where we get to see the magic. So this is what that form looks like. 
If I were to click this link, it's gonna take you right to my YouTube channel, which is awesome. These little accordions work perfectly. Our slider with images is working perfectly. Again, we're gonna change some of these out. Our proposal is here. We have no information in there. And then we have our te uh, testimonials and next steps here. And I don't get to see the submission button because I don't get to see any of that as the owner of this form. Now, how do we get this to actually populate with something? We will put this into a project. So if I were to go into Cynthia's project and add this, I'm gonna search copy, I think it's custom invitation proposal, copy. And here when we bring it into the job, we can see everything pulling in there. So let's add this. You can go in and further edit it for her job if you need to, whatever you wanna do. And then let's see, we don't have any invoices for Cynthia. So let's say she bought on Etsy. So we don't have any invoices for her, but we'll go ahead and collect that. And then when we go into her proposal, we will see here that it has pulled in her information. So when I'm looking at this form, I'm thinking, okay, I, I should add some space around this. I should change what this looks like a little bit, which I'll be able to do um, back in the Genie with my forms. I can add some little spacers between them uh, so it doesn't look so kind of abrupt with that proposal in the middle. Um, I also might just change some of the backgrounds to also be white so that it all kind of blends together. But you can just see how lovely and functional these forms are compared to what we started with, was, which was basically this boring, totally bland form. So you can do this with proposals, you can do with questionnaires, your lead captures, everything. So it's just an ability to add additional information, make yourself look amazing to your client, um, provide the look and feel of your entire website, all of your branding here within your proposals in Dubsado and also get the functionality of Dubsado. If you have packages here, they can select, they can choose, all of the same things will happen. You can see that the contract and invoice are still going to pull through exactly as they would have otherwise in Dubsado, but you can just do so many things using these Dubbins plugins. So I know it felt maybe a little bit complicated at first, but once I've done this, once I've created the template, um, I can change the invoice just as I've always done for every order and it will change all of this information here. Um, I definitely will recommend putting some new pictures in and changing this up so it's a little bit more of the focus since that's the whole reason for this proposal. So I hope you enjoyed playing with me and I have a discount code if you want to invest in that designer template or any of their additional dub ins. They also have things like conditional logic if you are familiar with that. Um, it's a little bit more complicated so I'll have to do another tutorial on that. This is the basics of how to get those absolutely incredibly beautiful forms in Dubsado and I cannot wait to keep playing with this and see what it, see where it takes me.